For years now, I've been hiking with an external frame backpack. This one, to be specific, the RAI Trekker uh, Sierra Crest. This is a great pack, and more importantly, this is the pack that got me into backpacking because I was able to get it for a great deal at a garage sale. It was just a few bucks, and sure, it's not optimal or lightweight. It's got bigger zippers and pockets and whatever than it needs to, but it did the trick, and it got me out on the trail. However, it's much heavier than I want my pack to be, and more importantly, it doesn't fit me properly. When I started hiking, I had never been sized, and I didn't know what my dimensions were. So. Now it is high time for me to get my own pack. I was looking for a pack that was in the two to three pound range, something great for weekend hiking, uh, maybe a maximum of seven days because that fits the way that I hike. I wanted to find some durable non-rip nylon packs. I wasn't interested in Dyneema because I'm not through hiking and I don't think that I would get the return from the investment in that kind of material and I wanted something that could carry at least 45 liters, ideally 55 was my target, just based on the gear I have and what I'm looking for. When you buy a pack, know your gear first and be done upgrading your gear for the most part so that you can be sure it's all gonna fit in the pack before you select the pack for yourself. If you're interested in me doing a breakdown of the gear I have now and some of the decisions I've made in buying what I have and what I'm looking to upgrade, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to make a video about that. I did a whole bunch of research and I narrowed it down to two packs, two, two packs that I think would fit me well. The Gregory Optic and the Osprey Exos. Today I want to talk about why those packs were the right fit for me, what I liked about both of them, the pros and cons of each, and which one I ultimately settled on to be my next pack. Let's start by looking at the Osprey Exos. This is actually the 48 liter, but all the stats and everything that I've posted in this video are for the 58 liter. I just didn't have the 58 with me during this part of the review. Um, so running down all the important basic stats, uh, so the 58 liter obviously holds 58 liters. Uh, its full weight comes in at about 2.6 pounds, uh, which can be reduced by taking off bits of the pack down to I think about 2.3 as a minimum. Uh, the load for this pack is, uh, according to Osprey, between 20 and 40 pounds. Uh, my personal experience with the load is a little different than that. It is a phenomenal pack for 20 to 25 pounds, but once you start to hit that 30 pound range, it, uh, it certainly can support the weight, but it becomes a lot less comfortable. Noteworthy features on this pack, you've got a removable brain, comes off really easy, just unclips there and the brain can come right off. This brain's got two zippers, both a top zipper and a, uh, and a zipper here on the side to get inside the brain. That's great. Um, it has this really nice rain cover where if you do take the brain off, there's a second cover that can uh, come over and cover the inside of the pack. Uh, there's a drawstring pack with a whole lot of room in there. It's a big old empty sack inside. Uh, moving around to the pockets, you've got a big center back pocket here. Tons of room. I really like how durable the center fabric is with the stretch on the sides. It seems like it would be a lot less likely to, for that to tear over time. Um, two dual axis water bottle pockets. Uh, these are very easy to get stuff in and out as you're walking. I found it was easy to grab a water bottle on the trail. You can just reach back, grab it. And um, you have one clip for uh, an ice pick or a trekking pole. Uh, other interesting features, there is a hydration sleeve inside with uh, places to click or run your hydration through. And um, there's also this extra clip on the front, which can be used to temporarily stash your trekking poles when you are standing. Um, one more thing, probably one of the best features of this pack is this suspension system here is so comfortable and it breathes so well. Uh, again, for 20 to 25 pounds, I don't think I have worn a more comfortable pack. The weight is just so evenly distributed across your back, it feels like you're hardly wearing anything. 
Um, when I tested this pack out with 20 pounds, I loved it. I was sold on it. When I tested it out with 30 pounds, I found that this lower area here, there's like a hard bit of the frame on the bottom that started to dig into the small of my back a little bit. And um, so I wasn't as pleased with how it felt when I crossed the 30 pound range. All over, phenomenal pack. If you know your gear is gonna be under, um, say 25 pounds and under, if you've dialed in your set, uh, I, I really can't find any fault with this pack. Heavy duty nylon, um, water resistant, uh, excellent price, really, really nice pack. Let's talk about the optic now. Here is the Gregory optic. This is the optic 58. So comparing like for like, this is the 58 liter uh, pack or one of the 58 liter packs from Gregory. Uh, this clocks in at 2.4 pounds, so slightly less than the Osprey Exos, but once you start taking things off of each pack, they both hit about 2.2 uh, as a minimum weight if they remove things you don't need. Um, so very comparable in weight. Uh, the suggested carry weight on Gregory's site for this pack is a capacity load of 35 pounds, and I've found that to be true. I tested this out on a hike as well with both 20 and 30 pounds. With 20 pounds, honestly, I almost didn't like it that much with 20 pounds. It was, it was okay. I didn't like it as much as the Osprey though. Um, the suspension here is good, but you feel more pressure at the top and the bottom of the pack and you don't really feel it as evenly in the middle. It's still a really nice suspension, suspension but where this additional support um, at the bottom of the pack comes into play is when you get in that 25 plus range. So when I put this pack on with 30 pounds, it was much more comfortable for me than the Osprey Exos because this extra support here took that load and it um, comfortably supported it on the small of my back without cutting into me at all. Uh, so just running down all the other standard features, again, you have a removable brain. You do have to unthread the brain. You can't just clip it off. So it's removable, but takes a tiny bit more work. Uh, you've got two pockets, access on the outside, another pocket access on the inside. The Optic comes with a rain cover included, which is great for the price. This is a Gregory rain cover, covers the Optic really well, and that just stashes here in the brain. Um, if you don't want to bring it, then don't bring it, and you can decrease the weight of this pack even more. Um, but if you like to carry a rain cover, that's a phenomenal uh, deal for the money. Um, another drawstring, very similar interior to the Exos. Uh, you've got your hydration uh, pouch as well. So that runs out here and you've got hydration clips. Um, nothing too fancy on the front. There is, this is kind of fun, a sunglass holder. Your sunglasses just slide in right there and uh, you can keep them in front of you as you go. That's fun. Uh, standard same three pockets. You've got a nice big mesh pocket on the back here. Tons of space. I like it just a little bit less than the than the Exos. Um, it seems like you know without that hard center, it's maybe not quite as durable. But plenty of space, hold things in really well. And then very similar side pockets with uh, dual access. And again, I tested these out. Very easy to get your water bottle in and out of the side pockets as you're hiking. Uh, the Optic does have hip belt pockets. They're not very big. I can just barely fit my standard um, Pixel, uh, Pixel cell phone. I got a Pixel 2, uh, same size as the Pixel 4 last I checked, and it just barely wedges in here. So not a lot of space, but if you want them, better than nothing. And uh, I think that's all of the major features. Oh, it does have two ice pick or trekking pole loops. So you can stick both of those on the back. I'll show a picture of this pack um, stuffed full with uh, 30 pounds worth of gear. Um, uh, as I mentioned, at 20 pounds, this is a really close race between the Optic and the Exos for me. However, when I loaded them both up with 30 pounds and tested them out again, the Optic was the clear winner at that weight. Just a lot more comfortable with the additional support at the bottom of the, uh, of the back and the small of the neck. Um, both really nice packs, uh, both really good uh, for the lightweight 
uh, heavy duty nylon pack category. Uh, I'd recommend both of these. Um, and uh, for me, it just came down to I liked the extra, I like the addition of the hip belt pockets. I like the way that the trekking poles fit on the back of the optic better. And knowing my gear and knowing that I'm still in the 25 to 30 pound range, uh, I liked having the option of going up to 30 pounds and still maintaining comfort. So ultimately, I landed on the Gregory Optic as my pick for my next backpack. In all of the ways that mattered a lot to me, this was just as good as the Osprey Exos. And in a few important ways, it was better. The inclusion of the hip, the hip belt pockets, hip belt pockets, even though they're pretty small, still was a nice added feature for me. And the extra support in the small of the back was absolutely crucial for weights when it got to be about 30 pounds plus, which I know, especially on longer packs, I'm expecting to hit that 30 pound limit. For me, this was the ideal pack. I'm not sponsored by either Gregory or Osprey. These packs are the result of my own research, my own looking into things, and I think they're both great. I think if you're staying under the 25 pound limit and hip belt pockets aren't a must for you, then the Osprey Exos is probably a better fit. But by all means, do your own research and compare other packs. These are by no means the only good packs within this category that I was looking in. Uh, the Mariposa 60 by Gossamer Gear or Granite Gear's Crown 2 are both really good options you should look into and in exploring if you want something that's two to three pounds and durable nylon material. I'll have links to all of the packs that I've mentioned in the end of this video. I hope that some of this helped you pick your next pack. I hope that you learned something. I hope that um, this was fun and interesting for you. To see more videos like this, please subscribe. If you know someone that would benefit from this kind of information about packs and backpacking, send them the video and tell them hello from me. That's all for now. Sparky out.